This is our 61st year doing it um, here at the Old Car Festival and we love doing it every single year, we love being a part of it. And we appreciate you coming and watching this. If this is the first time you've seen it, welcome. If it's the uh, you know, 50th time you've seen it, welcome back. This is made up of generations of uh, different people from the original team. What you'll see here is the frame being put on the front axle there. The front axle and the frame and the rear end are all made of what's called vanadium steel. This was a specific type of steel that was developed exclusively through the Ford Motor Company. It's a very uh, strong but agile type of steel that was imported. Well, he came up with the idea on visits overseas in England. Now, I said the Model T was uh, invented in, or started in production in 1909. It was part of Henry Ford's vision to create a vehicle that was the most cost-effective vehicle for the masses. You see, and you've probably seen it around the village, a lot of very expensive vehicles at the time. Prior to this, cars were a, a luxury item and people would, would, only the wealthy would be able to afford it. But Henry Ford had a vision to create something that every person could afford and could help them travel across the United States. You'll see the engine there, that is a four-cylinder engine. It's all cast in one block, which was another revolutionary thing that Henry Ford did to save on cost. Prior to this, you had individual cylinders cast by themselves, and then you would pair those together. So if you look at some of the older cars in the village, that's the type of engine that they have. The rear end, you'll see, is rear-wheel drive, and the brakes are on the rear. There are no front brakes on this, it's just on the rear. So. Be a little bit mindful when you're stepping out in the roads and you see a Model T coming towards you because that's their brakes. <laughs> the wheels that are going on are wire wheels. This was an option in 1926 and 27. Prior to this, you saw wooden spoke wheels. Uh, wooden spoke wheels, although you think they are made of wood, might not be very strong, but they are incredibly strong. They're made of hickory, and if you're a baseball player, you know how strong the hickory is. They're very flexible, and that's one of the reasons why hickory is used in spoke. They're equally as strong. Now, if you talk to anybody with wooden spoke wheels, they tend to dry out just a little bit, but if you park your car by a river or just over a little bit of water, the water swells up the spokes and the wheel's good for another 100 miles. You'll see the muffler going in. Uh, there's no catalytic converter on this. That was a little bit later. Um, the steering column has two controls on it. There's the one that's on the right-hand side and there's the one that's on the left-hand side. One is your throttle and one is your spark. So you actually don't have a gas pedal. You have a throttle that's operated via your hand. And we'll show you that when we go to drive it. What's going to be mounted shortly is the gas tank. That sat underneath the driver's seat, so you were sitting on top of the gas tank. And the whole reason for that was to eliminate the need for a fuel pump. If we have the gas tank higher than the carburetor, which you can see right here, it's all gravity fed downwards, so you don't need a pump to put fuel into the engine. An issue with that though is when you are a little bit low on gas, there's not enough fuel pressure pushing down on the tank and you're trying to go up a hill, now your carburetor is higher than your gas tank, so you might run out of fuel. Model T owners of the time, what they would do is they would back up a hill and now for the gas tank is always up uh, above the uh, carburetor. The radiator that's going on um, is operated via the thermo siphon system. Basically what that means is that there's no water pump either. That, there was, these were all reasons why Henry Ford wanted to get rid of uh, cost in the vehicle to drive the price down. All it is is it's just basically a convection circuit. So as the water heats up in the block, it rises to the top of the radiator. When you go through, it cools the water, it condenses, it becomes a liquid, and then it goes to the back, and then it circulates via natural convection. These were rolling off the assembly line every 90 seconds, so they're, uh, and in 1922, peak production was 1.1 million cars in one year. So you can imagine how, how many vehicles there were. 
at its top performance, there was 50% of the market share on the in the United States was a Model T. And you're probably seeing that throughout the village, how many Model Ts are around. That's very accurate to what it would have been like back in the day. The Model T ran from 1909 to 1927, and then it was... Uh, the next generation was the Model A. If you've ever been in a Model A and you compare it to a Model T, you know how much of a difference there is. The Model T, by the end of the run of production, was not a very modern car compared to the rest of the automobiles. And that was all done in the great thing there when the Model A came out. Looks like we're going to get it started. You can see Rob operating the two meters there. That's the throttle in his one hand and the spark in the other with a crank and a little choke on the carb. Let's see if it can start. Thank you. 